Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the OT Podcast. I'm here with Owen as you all know. Hello. We are ready to go for our week 7 predictions this week. Owen, last week both of us had the exact same picks for the week. We both went nuts though. 13 and 1 records are only lost being the Broncos losing to the Chargers. Thank you, Broncos. Which, uh, yeah, exactly. I have been wrong about the Broncos all season. Every game I've picked them to win, they've lost. And every game I've picked them to lose, they have won. So, awesome job by the Broncos. We'll get to them first, <laughs> I guess. As we oh, start yeah, out with Thursday Night Football on Amazon Prime, as you like to say. Broncos and Saints, who do you got winning this one between a battle of the rookies, Spencer Rattler and Bo Nix? You know, I think I'm going to have to go with the Broncos winning this one on uh, Thursday uh, night. You know, no. Spencer Rattler, you know, they did put the they did put up twenty seven points in total, like, you know, including the special teams for Heat Shaheed and, and the garbage score and time. Yes, and the garbage time points and everything. But uh the Broncos defense is a lot better of a defense than the Buccaneers defense is. Well, right to now. be fair, the Bucks defense is unhealthy right now. Because That's Zeta true. Bay is not there and stuff. That's true. And for the most part I oh, I'd say, well, is Pets or Tin even gonna play this game? I believe so. Is he? Time. Okay, okay. That was scared me a little bit if he wasn't yeah. playing, but... Well, even if he doesn't, I feel like it won't make too, too much of a difference because I feel like the top make it, two options are both out. I feel like it would make it a closer game, though, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. Without Sertan, but... Most definitely. Yeah, um, Broncos did have a rough outing offensively last week. They did end up scoring 16 in the end, but, you know, the first half of that game was really a struggle for them to just even get the ball moving even a little bit. Um, so, maybe a little bit worrisome, but, you know, it's going to happen when you have a rookie quarterback under center, but... Two rookies playing, you know, Spencer Rattler, second career start, you know, on prime time, going against a really tough Broncos secondary. You'll see how he plays, but in the end, I think the Broncos will get the job done here on Thursday night. Yeah, and kind of this, my pick's going to be the exact same. I'm going to go with the Broncos as well. So the Broncos are going to lose this week. Got it. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, my score prediction is 20-13 to 13 in this one. That is just in case Patrick Sertan doesn't play. I think this game is going to be very close, though, nonetheless. Um... Either way, though, I really do think that these guys are equipped to win this game. You have Rashid Shahid and Chris Olave, who are both out on the opposite side for this one. And then on top of that, Bo Nix's worst performance as a rookie so far was his Week 2 game. I understand that was against the Steelers, but th this Broncos defense really isn't that far back of the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, if you really think about it. They have a way better secondary yeah. as well. With set, with like, Literally with Sertan alone, they have a better secondary so it's been really cool to kind of see this Broncos team start to develop. Uh, last week, obviously, they falter a little bit after the three straight wins. But I think they get back on track on a short week on Thursday night and take down Spencer Rattler. I don't think that he's going to have the best game ever, bonix wise But I think he'll have a solid enough game to get them to win at, is it Mercedes-Benz Stadium? Yeah, Superdome. S Superdome, okay. The Falcons yeah, Stadium. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's it's, so, it's so trash, man. Well, I all got. You know, I thought and they're in the same division. I thought about that a couple months ago. I'm like, wait, are they both Mercedes Benz? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the hell, can one of them at least be and like the Buccaneers, Chevrolet or something? Buccaneers Stadium gets like destroyed from Hurricane Helene, and they just name it Mercedes Benz Superdome Stadium. <laughs> Literally, oh, just yeah. both Mercedes Benz uh, Superdome Stadium Plus. Yeah, yeah. We're, oh, stop, stop. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Uh, anyway, we'll move into our London game of the week as the oh. Jaguars get to stay in London. Patriots are in London for the first time with a rookie quarterback, Drake May. He had three touchdowns to two picks last week, albeit two of those touchdowns were in garbage time. Texans absolutely mopped the floor with them. The Jaguars here got a desperate, desperate game in this one. Do they win? And if they do lose, is this the end for Doug Peterson? Who really knows? But who do you got in our first game on Sunday? You know, I really feel like either team can really win this game. Exactly, man. You know, Drake May, I, he looked really impressive last week, especially against that tech, that Texans team. He had a deep ball to Demario Douglas for a touchdown. That was like 72-yard pass. That was just amazing throw. Well, the the one that was there, he had like a 50-yarder or something that was like a touchdown to Boucher or whatever his name is. Oh, Boot. Boot, boot yeah, Boot. Um, and then his other uh, big touchdown was kind of—it was a shorter pass, but the guy just broke free and scored. But it's still like you know a good play by Drake May and everything. So you know, if you're a Patriots fan, I know that even though you lost, that has to give you at least some hope. You know, going into next week. 
and against the Jaguars team that is continuing to disappoint throughout the season. And I'm starting to feel really good about myself because I remember in the offseason, I'm like, hey, man, I don't think Trevor Lawrence is the guy. Like, I know they paid him all this money, but I don't know how I feel about No, him. I didn't think he would be that great. I just didn't think it'd be this bad that because of him. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. like, I thought they'd still be able to win games in spite of him. But at the same time, I'm looking at the, uh, like, the start to their schedule was absolutely terrible for them. Like, they got screwed with the schedule. Yeah. The Look start at the, of the Cardinal season. schedule, too. It's really yeah. bad, too. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, um, I, I think I'm gonna have to lean towards the Jaguars winning this game. Uh, you know, just being in London for an extra week, you know, f really helps them a lot here. Um, and you know, I you could make an argument for the Patriots here too, just because of how kind of bad the Jaguars have played. Right. But you know, Doug Peterson's job I feel like is on the line in this game, and going against the Patriots team, it's one of the worst teams in the league. Maybe not so much anymore because you know Drake may uh, kind of get in a light under the fire like. For the offense, I said yeah, that terribly. Yeah, no, I know. Um, fine. But you know, I think the Jaguars—they have a lot to lose in this one. So I think the Jaguars are going to win this one. I don't think they're going to blow them out or anything, but I think they're going to at least do enough to win this game. Yeah, I'm going to have to lean the exact same way. And the two main points that you said that I agree with fully are in this one are the Jaguars got to stay in London for this week. The Patriots are coming in jet lagged and all those other un uh, like things that are going to really ruin them. And then the Jaguars have so much on the line this week, especially Doug Peterson. And mm. I know I already said that, but, I mean, dude, like, this is literally the epitome of do or die if you're Doug Peterson. This is a terrible Patriots team. No offense to Drake May or any of the other, uh, like, the pe like I guess the pieces on defense that have been pieces. very solid. But I'm telling you right now, I just I can't pick against the Jacksonville Jaguars in this one. This is a game they desperately have to have, especially after coming out flat against the Bears. I think they're going to start this game with a little bit of – urgency they're gonna play this game very close though i think the patriots make this a very good game at the end 24 17 jags win in london so give me the jacksonville jaguars to finally you know like play like i guess up to standards but like it is still a very beat up terrible patriots team especially on the offensive line if josh Hines allen doesn't get at least a sack or two which it's so weird saying josh Hines allen i'm just used to, <laughs> i'm just saying josh allen but I mean, I think this is going to be a very good game, but give me the Jags to win that one in London. All right. Uh, next up, a potential game of the week with the Lions and oh, Vikings. Doing that right out of the gate. I mean, this is the way that Google had it set up, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> so give me the Lions and the Vikings game. NFC North showdown. One of the last unbeaten teams in the NFL, the Vikings, coming off their bye week. Do they win after the rest week, or do the Lions put an end to Sam Darnold's win sanity run? You know, I, re I, I really want to pick the Vikings to win, uh -oh. but I feel like I have to go with the Lions. Right. Even though they did lose Aiden Hutchinson, I feel like in a, in a game like this... So, so sad, man. I, it is really sad. That was such a terrible game. Listening to that replay, you Dude. can hear his legs Yeah, Yeah, nah, I know, man. No. <laughs> and I'm getting very graphic, I know. Yes. Yeah, um, but, yeah, in, in the beginning of the season, I feel like majority of people thought the Lions were going to win the division. And the fact that, you know, the Lions were able to stay in and hang in with the Vikings having this insane run of starting off the season 5-0. and um, Very impressive. And now the Lions have a chance here, like, even though how great the Vikings have played. Vikings have a chance to lose the division, like, already, even though starting the season 5-0. and um, You know, that could be said, you know, have a I still bye, think that they can make a, a wild card no matter what, though. Vikings? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's definitely still a chance. Traded for, for Cam Akers the other day, too, This actually. division may be the best in football, by It the is way. the best in football. Except for the Bears, man. Like, I, I'm not fully convinced with the Bears yet. The Bears have not had a play tough opponent. Yeah, they've played the player. Panthers and the Jags the last two games, too. And everyone's like, Caleb Williams has finally arrived. I'm like, they played the Panthers and Jaguars secondaries, bro. I'll like, let the fans be happy yeah. for once, man. <laughs> yeah, literally, right? <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, for the Lions, watching their game last week, of course, you know, they dismantled the Cowboys and everything. Great, great service the Lions did us all. But, um, <laughs> yeah, right. at the end of the game, the one thing that really stood out to me, even though this might have not, like, a whole lot to do with, like, really anything, is the fact that at the end of the game, when they were up as much as they were, they tried so hard to get an offensive lineman touchdown. And I think that just speaks volume to the kind of team that they are this season. That was so funny, though, because what happened last time. That's exactly why I know. did it. They are a team that is not going to give up. If they're up 50 nothing, they're not going to put their starters in the bench. They're going to keep fighting. And they and almost they're... cost them in this one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not almost. They kind of did. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. But this, Tell me I'm wrong. this team, I feel like, is on a mission this year. This is the first, like, this... 
speaks more volumes than I feel like the Jets trading for Adams or the Bills trading for Amari Cooper. Like, the fact that they went out there and, like, were as ballsy as they were and did something like that, I think shows a lot about this team. Especially and I, Dan Campbell. Yeah, right? Like, he's, allow this. he drew even more balls than last season. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think this is the Lions game here to lose. I think this is a lot, like, this game is streaming Lions to me, even though the Vikings have started off the season 5-0. and not going to be surprised if the Li- or if the Lions lose this game just because of how the Vikings have been to start the season. But, you know, i got to ride with the Lions winning this one on the road in Minnesota. Yeah, the one thing I will say about this game that really made me choose the Detroit Lions, so we're going to ride the same way okay. again. I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there. It came down to which quarterback I felt was better. And I'm so serious, it's got to be Jared Goff. I like what Darnold's done this season. He's looked very good, don't get me wrong. But if you look at the Lions here, even when Jared Goff has bad games, they're still in it. A perfect example was that Buccaneers game they lost. They lost by four points in that game, 20-16. to 16, And he had three interceptions, two of which were in the red zone. The, if he doesn't throw those interceptions, they probably win that game. And even with the interceptions, they were so close to still winning that football game. I feel like he could get away with more than Darnold can on the opposite side here. Because if you turn the ball over as Darnold in this game, the Lions are going to take that and run with it and score a touchdown most likely, or at least a field goal. If you give that same exact opportunity to Sam Darnold, I don't expect him to cash in as many times as the Lions. And that's the big thing in this game. Even being on the road, I think the Lions are going to play very good. And I do think that this is going to be one of those games for the Detroit Lions that they have to win. They they consider themselves Super Bowl candidates, Super Bowl champions almost already. They view themselves, I mean, look at the Niners. They haven't played up to expectations. The Eagles haven't played up to expectations. The one team that has exceeded expectations is the Vikings, a team in front of them. They have a lot to prove in this game. They have to prove that they're still the best team in the NFC North, and I think they do that this week with a 24-20 win. All right. So give me the Lions to win that one in an NFC North showdown. Moving on to our Buffalo Bills at home to take on the Tennessee Titans, who have looked lifeless after their <laughs> beatdown of the Dolphins. Here they are on the road in Buffalo to take on a somewhat poor Bills team right now. They've played pretty bad these last few games. Do the Bills run away with this one? Is it a close Bills win? Or do the Titans pull off the upset in Buffalo? You know, I just want to throw this out there first. He's a first. Bills fan. No. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, obviously. Um, I hope people would know that by now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but um, for anyone that thinks Amari Cooper will be playing this week, I'd say, like, push probably the brakes not. real quick. He's probably not going to play, and if he does, it'll probably be very minimally because you know he still needs to learn the playbook and all these things and get acclimated with the offense. I do like Brandon Bean's decision to get him now, though, because we're coming up at a stretch where we don't really need him as much right now because we're playing two defenses back to back: the Titans and then the Seahawks that aren't really performing that well. That's true, that's true. But it's a very um, good work. I feel like him. he'd still probably play against the Seahawks. No, I know he will. I'm just saying we picked a very good time for him yeah, to right? like, shake off the rust of like being on a new team and having to learn the playbook and everything else. Yeah. Another thing I'd say I'm pretty curious to see is uh, the meme that's going to come out of this game this week for what's going to happen <laughs> with Will Levis. Levis. Yeah, right. But knowing our luck, this is going to be the game that the Titans win. You know, I'm just like, oh my god, like the Titans won. <laughs> He's like this, and like it's just like the Will Levis from, throws the game-winning touchdown pass. No, it's just like this from a few weeks ago or whatever, because like the Bills are upset, and it's just this on like ESPN's page. <laughs> I, I can see it already. Uh, but yeah, yeah with uh, how the Titans' defense has been, you know, I think this game the Bills are going to be able to control. I think I think they're going to be able to continue to run the ball pretty well um <laughs> yeah i know thanks <laughs> first down first down oh, he punches you right in the face uh, yeah i think the defense i think the defense is gonna be able to fly around in this game make stops when it need when it needs to uh i haven't really seen a whole lot from the titans this year like i feel like that's pretty safe to say oh, yeah. i feel like the titans have the capability to at least be somewhat decent they've had the potential yeah, they have the potential. They have the pieces. It's just they, not... they haven't put it together yet. Exactly. They just haven't put it together. And we're six yeah. weeks in, man. Like at this about point, about to be well seven weeks in technically. We're in week seven now. Well, they're they, they, how many games have they played? Well, they, they've they had, had their bye. They yeah, had their bye say, already. So six. Yeah. This is their sixth game. True, but yeah, they're just not not a whole lot of life right now on the Titan side of things. And for Buffalo, you know, they did have a crappy win last week. Is definitely safe to say. Oh yes. But um, it was still a big win for them. Um. You know, at the end of the day, they did get the win in New Jersey. And, you know, they got to continue to get the win. Yeah, I always do. (laughs) 
And, you know, this is the game that Buffalo, you know, they should win right now because of the uncertainty with kind of the Jets right now. Like, they did get Devontae Adams, so maybe they still need to keep winning games here just because the off chance that the Jets are going to come flying out of nowhere now just because they got Devontae flying Adams. Flying out of nowhere. Yeah, I know. Okay, coming with all the puns this morning. <laughs> But yeah, we'll see what happens, but I feel like the Bills are definitely the safe pick in this one, and it would be a shocker if the Titans did end up winning this game. So. That's exactly why I'm going with the Bills, baby! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so I'm going to go with the Bills in this one as well for a lot of the same reasons as you. This is a Titans defense that hasn't lived up to expectations, especially a specific man by the name of Legereus Sneed, who was supposed to be an all-world beater coming over from Kansas City. Even Shadobi Awuzie, who came over from Cincinnati, <laughs> hasn't looked that great. <laughs> was that? Um, on top of those two things, I think Allen's going to be able to control this game. I feel like we're going to be able to finally establish the run and just that's the one main thing in this game. I want us to be able to establish the run and only really work off the play action and stuff like that because after what we saw last week, we need to keep the ground game going. They were doing so well, especially in the beginning of the game. Ray Davis had a very good game last week. I love you, Ray Davis. I mean, even if James Cook's the starter in this game, most likely will be, obviously. I do think that you have to, have to, have to run the football in order to get the most out of Joe Brady's offense. And that needs to be happening in this game. This is a game we have to win. This is a game we should win. And this is a game the Bills will win. 28-14, to 14, I think Buffalo's offense gets it going early and doubles up the Titans' score at home at Highmark Stadium. Uh, you might be going to this game, I think, right? Uh, I'm not anymore. Oh, no. you, uh, you were talking with Luke about going. I, I was, was, but then he was like, oh, sorry, I'm actually going to hang out with another one of my buddies. So um, I was like, oh, damn, all right. I, I hanging out it. with David. Of all uh, people. Uh, Shout out Luke and David. Uh, he said of all people. Dang, that was shade, <laughs> David. No, uh, just because he beat me last week. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, I, beat, you, I beat David because I'm better. Uh, anyway, uh, Considering moving I have a better on. record in the standings, but yeah. Okay, man. Because of Tony Pollard. <laughs> I love you, Tony Collins. So we're going to go to the Colts-Dolphins game. Oh. Of the week. The uh, shitter of the week. You got Anthony Richardson finally coming back from his hip injury, even though Joe Flacco has looked very nice in his absence. I think that this is going to be a big game for the Indianapolis Colts here. This is a game right before their schedule gets really, really tough. So, uh... This is one that might be a must-win for them, and they're at home against the Dolphins team without Tua still. Who do you got winning this one, Indy or Miami? Well, I feel like it's kind of hard to pick the Dolphins right now, because even though they did beat the Patriots the other week, like their offense still did not look good whatsoever. They beat Jacoby Brissett. That should have been the game they started, Drake May, the Dolphins It should have been, yeah. Well, honestly, they would have won that game. <laughs> they literally probably, yeah. won that. Yeah, they probably would have. Um, I also feel like whether... Flacco or Richardson does play this game. I feel like this is still the Colts game to lose here. Exactly. Um, Dolphins, they're just kind of lifeless right now without Tua. And with how much people like bash Tua locks, I know we both like to bash Tua all the time. Yeah, apparently this he was team, this team. Yeah, Tua <laughs> is literally the Miami Dolphins right now. And I feel like that honestly kind of shows how good Tua may actually be because how good he is in at the running system, the system. Yes. It, yeah. Like, He's like perfect. Other quarterbacks can't run the system clearly right now, but the Joe Flacco should just switch sides for this game just to make it competitive. <laughs> oh my god, I just, I don't even know how Joe Flacco would do on the Dolphins. That'd be interesting. That'd be an inter I mean, he wouldn't be able to run. I mean, they wouldn't have to worry about him getting injured, I <laughs> getting mean, concussed. Right. I guess, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is the Colts game to lose right now. If they lose this game, this is really really bad news for Colts fans. If they lose against the Dolphins, they're what three and three. Uh, right Colts are three and three. Yes, yeah, so Dolphins is... are two and three, second in the AFC East. Believe it or not. Yeah, well, yeah, that's because the which is insane. After this week, they won't be anymore. Well, yeah, for, well, it depends. Depends on the other games play out. Well, yeah, I guess the Jets game too. Yeah, I, I forgot the Jets don't have a bye this week. I'm so stupid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I got the Colts winning this one. Jonathan Taylor, he may or may not play this week too. So keep an eye on that Jeez. for this matchup too. So uh, yeah, Thomas, who do you got? Yeah, I think that Jonathan Taylor is going to play this game, and I think that Jonathan Taylor is going to be the one that kind of runs this the show, really, in this game. I think he has to. Anthony Richardson's coming off that hip injury. They don't want to risk him too much. Well, he like he loves to run the ball. I get that, but this is one of those games where you got to ease him back in. You got to give him short, simple passes to throw the ball and stuff. You can't make him do too much. And I think this is going to be one of those games he's not going to have to do too much. On the opposite side, you got Tyler Huntley starting most likely again. So for this Dolphins team, there's just not a lot of optimism. You're going up against a Colts defense that's really not that great in the secondary. So 
in theory, Hill and Waddle should be able to put in massive work for this team. It's just a matter of if Tyler Huntley is the quarterback to help them get to that level in this one. And I'm going to say no, unfortunately, for these Dolphins fans. This is going to be another loss. Tua could return next week, though. So there's yes. very much so optimism. Keep an eye out for Miami. And I'm not going to lie to you. If Miami wins this game, their season's not over at 3-3 three and three with Tua coming back. Just want to throw that not out there. All. I do think that this is going to be a closer game than people expect. I think it'll be a little lower scoring. So give me 21-13 Colts in this one to get the job done at home. And then we're going to move into the NFC side of things. One of the better matchups, the Falcons and Seahawks. Mm. This is going to be a good game. The Falcons with a big win last week against the Panthers. They've had a couple in a row. And then on the opposite side, the Seahawks have been the exact opposite, losing a few in a row. So there's a very big game for these Falcons and Seahawks teams. A very big game for the Seahawks, especially considering that they have lost three in a row and they have a chance to have some hope in the division with the 49ers playing the Chiefs this week. Yes. So they could retake the division lead if that is to happen. So who do you have winning this one between all NFC teams, Falcons or Seahawks? You know, I think this game is a chance to be very high scoring in this one. This just feels oh, like yeah. one of those games where... Feels like the Lions and Seahawks game did. Yeah. Almost, it's, not it's, as extreme, but... Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be back and forth for most of this game. And I feel like it's going to come down to which defense you trust more. And obviously, in this one, it's going to be the Falcons because the, the Seahawks have definitely played below expectations on the defensive side Most of the definitely. ball all season long. And I feel like the defense is going to be what's going to kill them in this game. If their defense can make a couple big stops in this one, I feel like the Seahawks might have a pretty good shot to win this week. But it's just a matter of trusting that defense. And I don't think a whole lot of people, especially Seahawks fans, really trust that defense right now. So with how the Seahawks defense has been playing, I feel like this is the Falcons game right now. And with how uh, Kirk Cousins and that, out, that offense has been playing in recent weeks, uh, even against the Panthers, which was a bit of a close game, maybe a little bit of a scare for Falcons fans. Um, the the offense week before, though, if the week before Falcons Whoa. show up with, against the Bucs, it's over by halftime. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, again, this is the Falcons game to lose, I feel like. And, uh, yeah, give me the Falcons to take this one over Seattle. Uh, eight times you said Falcons in that sense. Falcons, <laughs> Falcons, Falcons, Falcons. Falcons. <laughs> Falcons. But I'm going to also ride with the Atlanta Falcons. One. I have voiced my opinion on the Seahawks several times on this channel already and on this podcast specifically. I'm not that big of a Seahawks guy. At the same time, though, I don't hate the Seahawks. I obviously don't want to see any team perform poorly except for the Dolphins, Patriots, and Jets. Um, and the Chiefs. And the Chiefs. Uh, uh, anyway, I do think that this is going to be a very good game. It's going to be interesting to see how that defense plays for the Seahawks. I think that's going to be what does them in, though. Give me the Falcons 31-21 to to win this one. I think at home especially, this is going to be such a hard game for the Seahawks to win. With how much momentum they've lost, it's almost like a boulder's rolling down the hill at them. And they're tasked with stopping it like with the, just like one person trying to stop a boulder coming down a hill. <laughs> and it, it's going to be... Yeah, okay. I, I just don't think that it's going to be possible for the Falcons to really blow this game. I mean, we've seen it in recent weeks where, like, they haven't been able to do too well. I do think that this is the favorable matchup for the Seahawks receivers, though. I think this is a secondary that is beatable, especially outside of A.J. Terrell. They really don't have anybody in the other on the other side for the corners. But, obviously, we know their safeties have been very good this season, Jesse Bates and Justin Simmons. So, I do think that the Falcons get the job done. I trust their defense a hell of a lot more than I trust the Seahawks' defense. So give me the Falcons to win this one by 10 points, 31-21. to 21. You said Seahawks seven times, by the way. Okay, <laughs> right. And I'm going to get into the potential game of the week number two, mm. Packers and Texans. Oh, this is the, I don't know, Jim, game this of the is, week. This is literally one of those games for me that I just, these two teams were mm. very, very similar last year. They had a quarterback no one expected to break out, made it to the divisional round, played better than expected, and fell and everyone's been having them potentially go to the Super Bowl this, this year. This is a potential Super Bowl matchup for a lot potentially, of people. Potentially, yes. I think that this is one of those like this is one of those matchups where 90% of the world has either the Packers or the Texans in the Super Bowl this year. One or the other. <coughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm one of those people that's not, but this is one of those games for these two teams. It's at Lambeau Field, a very crucial game for these two teams. Who gets the job done, Packers or Texans? This game gave me a headache trying to pick this nah. game. Is Nico Collins playing? <laughs> yeah, shut up. Um, 
you know, looking at these teams, they're both really good on the offensive side of the ball. They're both really good on the defensive side of the ball. Um, Packers offensively, you know, up until last week, you know, they were kind of struggling for those, like, two weeks there. They played the Cardinals, um, though. Yeah, they did play the Cardinals. Who fumbled know. three times. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and the Texans played the Patriots defense, which, you know, is better than the Cardinals defense, but, you know, still the <laughs> Patriots. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, like how I said to you, like, this game is just so close, and, you know, I, Nico Collins is going to be a big factor in this game, but, of course... He's on injured reserve right now. Yep. So I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers beating wow. the Houston Texans. You know, it's just a very evenly matched game. And uh, I feel like the Packers are a little bit healthier than the Houston Texans are, just for the simple fact about Nico Collins. It's a big piece of the Texans. Right. And I feel like if he was playing this game, I feel like the Texans could win this game. But, you know, again, Packers are at home. No Nico Collins for the Texans. Big game for both teams. Very close game to pick. I'm gonna go with the Packers and Jordan Love. First time I'm picking against um, my Texans. Super Bowl pick, the Texans, this season. But yeah, give me the Packers to start the season five and two and continue to be competitive in the NFC North. That is the absolute gauntlet. Exactly, and the Packers winning this game is gonna make that division all much more interesting. Right, like going farther into Week Eight in the season. So yeah, give me the Green Bay mother loving Packers. Over the Houston Saxons in this one. So, as we've known in weeks past, the team that's at home is normally the team I ride with, especially in the very, very close games. And this is one of those games that I feel like which team needs it more. And that, a hundred times over for me, is the Green Bay Pack. Oh, this yeah. is a game the Texans can afford to lose for the simple fact that they have such a big lead on the division. They already have the tiebreaker over the Bills. They have a chance to make a tiebreaker over the Chiefs later on in the season. And the Ravens as well. And on top of that, the Ravens have lost a couple of games early in the season, so a loss here really wouldn't be that bad. And it's to an NFC opponent, so it's really not the end of the world for them. It's not like they have to worry about a tiebreaker later down the line that could screw them over. This is the Green Bay Packers who are in the opposite conference. That's not going to matter. I think that this game matters so much more for the Green Bay Packers than it does for the Houston Texans. They're oh, playing yeah. in the gauntlet that is the AFC, um, the AFC NFC set. North. Yeah, NFC North. There we go. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They're playing in the NFC North. They've been absolutely insane to start the season. I get that. But this is the game where Jordan Love finally emerges as the quarterback we know he can be. This is the game that he's going to have to if they want to win this game. So give me the Packers to win this one 27-24. And we continue to pick the exact same team. I was going to say the same thing. For the entire week so far. Damn it. So uh, we're going to move into our next game, which I'm sure we're also going to agree on. Bengals and the Browns oh. in Cleveland, I understand. But down in Ohio, who's got this one? Packers. No, I'm kidding. Browns or the Bengals. Who gets it done in this one? All right, well, I'm picking the Browns. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> Please. You know, the Browns. <laughs> Please can... just do it. <laughs> I'm telling you guys right now, the Browns can easily win this game. Oh, yes. Most definitely. The Browns have owned Cincinnati for the past couple years. Miles Garrett has owned Joe Burrow the past couple years. Burrowhead. Burrowhead. Yeah, okay, that's so stupid. <laughs> and the uh, Bengals played terribly offensively last week. If it wasn't for that 50-yard Joe Burrow touchdown run, the flukiest run I've seen in my life, the game would have been 10-7 the end of that game, which is not good, especially against the Giants' defense. They would have lost that game if it wasn't for that, and then the two missed field goals. Exactly. And, uh, you know, the Browns, of course, they traded Amari Cooper away to the Bills, which I feel like is a big sign. That, you're you like, know, you're welcome. Oh, I'm so thankful. This is why I love the Browns, because they just do us big favors like this. Yeah, right. Literally. But when teams trade away, start... I'm sorry. <laughs> Should Go ahead. Could have told me to mute the mic first. Jeez. No, that's fine. Um, but when a team normally makes a move like this, trading away one of their star players midseason, that normally tells you that the team is not confident in their abilities to really do much this season. Well, and they're, they're looking ahead at the future more than anything. I have a piece of shit at quarterback. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> they got a rapist at quarterback. Oh, okay, I'm kidding. If they had Joe Burrow at quarterback, the Browns would be so insane. <laughs> the Browns would be 5-2 and two right now. The Browns would be like 7-0. and oh. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, no, no. They would not be seven. <laughs> the Browns would be insane. No with, chance. With Burrow. But Burrow uh, I don't think Nick Chubb is going to be playing this game, is he? He was questionable as far as I was concerned. That I don't think they would rush funny. him out there, honestly. I don't think they would. I don't, he probably won't play this week. If he this does, is a terrible Bengals defense, though. I'm going to be honest. If Nick Chubb waltzes out there in a uniform this week, the Browns are going to win. Yeah, that's a good chance. A good chance, This is yeah. like the reunion for him. Like This is the game of it. Okay, but, we know, have to win it for Chubb. You know, I also, I also want to throw this out here real quick. 
a lot of people were big on the Bengals this year. And big on Zach Moss. <laughs> No, I was why not. looking at me? Because you were like, oh, Zach Moss is a great running... No, I no. said Zach Moss would be a fine running back. No, I... he's not fine. He's not. <laughs> he was. He was he playing was. solid. Not anymore. He got me like 16 Chase points Brown just fans. took his job. He's on the bench now. That's because Zach Moss got injured in that game, and Chase Brown replaced him and played good. Yeah, okay. So Ray but Davis is going to be the new starting running back for the Buffalo Bills? No, that's a lot different because James Cook is a capable number one. Zach Moss is a rotational guy at best. That's true. But, yeah, uh, I am very worried about the Bengals still. Um, but, you know, I guess I'll pick them because they still got Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. I guess I'll pick them. You know, I guess. like they're playing one of the worst teams in the NFL right That now. still owns them regardless. It's like Jaguars, Colts. No matter what happens, the Jaguars always win. So it almost feels like with this matchup. Well, I mean, the Jaguars, though. You know, I, I'm going to give Bengals benefit of the doubt in this one. Uh, you know, if the Bengals look impressive in this one, if the Bengals offense actually looks good, I'll be a little bit more confident about them. But as of right now, no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm gonna lean the exact same way here. I have to go with the Bengals as well. This is a game for the de- like for the Denver the, Broncos. The, okay, <laughs> for the Cincinnati Bengals, they have to have. And realistically, being at two and four, the Browns have looked terrible to start the season. This is a game you can claw back into the playoff race with a win here and make your record three and four. This is a game you have to win, and I think this is a game that they do get done. I don't think it's going to be very convincingly, though. I think it's a 20-10 to 10 victory. I think that that offense for the Browns is just going to be complete trash in this game. As for the Bengals, I think that they're not going to have that great of a game. I think it's going to be a punt fest to start the game. They're going to get that touchdown that they always get in the first half that's like 30-plus yards most likely. But I, after, outside of that, I don't see them doing really anything with this game. I have the Bengals winning at 20-10. to 10. This is one of the snoozers of the week. I think that this will be a solid one, but I'm not confident in the Bengals' ability to perform, especially in this game here. I think that the Browns, whether they play Nick has a chub or not, I don't think that they. It, I don't think it matters. And I'm going to say that the Bengals get the job done on the road in Cleveland. It does scare me a little bit because they have been owned, but... I, I believe this I is also um one. I believe this is also the uh, shoe in the wheels game of the week by the oh way. God. Not for sure, but just looking no, at the schedule and Nick Chubb comes back. Nick Chubb, show in the wheels. Nick Chubb, look show at, in the wheels. Look at that new tire of his one leg. Zach Moss, show in the wheels. Oh, okay. Joe Burrow showing the wheels. Oh, if only the touchdown was this week. Imagine Joe Burrow showing the wheels. <laughs> Freak out because it's the quarterback. You just say show in the wheels like five times in a row. Show in the wheels. Show in the wheels. <laughs> Revving yeah. that engine. Oh, Jesus. All right, let's move We're going to move on to the next game. It's the Eagles and the Giants. Another one of those games where a lot of people are about, uh, instantly going to look, oh, Eagles instantly. I don't think it's that clear-cut and obvious in this one. They're playing on the road in New York, which obviously isn't really uh, – no, sorry, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, but, there uh, you go. I do think that the Giants and the Eagles, they've had a lot of close games, especially last year. The, both games with the Giants-Eagles were very close. Mm-hmm. The Giants – losing the first and then winning the second. What are your thoughts on this game? Does Nick Sirianni win this one, or do the Giants pull off another upset against the Bird? You know, I will say the Giants' defense did play very impressively against the Bengals last week, but I don't think they're going to be playing a lot impressively this week. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. He's laughing at me. Um, I think this is going to be one of those games where it's kind of going to be back and forth a bit in the first half, but I think in the second half, the Eagles are going to start to pull away in this one. You have like 38-35? No, <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Back tell you, and forth. I'm only going to tell you guys my score over on my YouTube channel and my uh, score prediction video. It's like about three minutes long. It's on not the even out yet. Yeah, it's going to be out as soon as this is out. <laughs> uh, so shut up. So it will be out by the time you guys are watching this. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, where are where am I? Uh, yeah, Eagles I think the start. Eagles offense is finally going to find its rhythm again this week. I really do. They did play rough against the Browns last week. They've been playing rough all season. But, you know, they lost two of the wide receivers. They just now came back last week. It's going to take time for them to mesh and get back into a rhythm again. Um, this could be a game where Saquon Barkley maybe goes off. If he, I feel like if he goes off, it's going to be more so in the passing game than anything. This is a reunion for Barkley. This is the first game. It is game. the revenge game. 300 rushing yards. This is touchdown. his revenge game, literally, because it's in New York. It's the too, first game well, he's playing against them, too. Yes. So it's a really uh, yeah, it's a big headline there. Um, but yeah, I don't trust. I still don't trust the Giants' offense at all. I don't think anybody should. If they get Malik Neighbors and Devin Singletary back, I mean, yeah, it could be a bit more respectable of a game. Obviously, Kayvon Thibodeau is still out. Because Thibodeau. He's on IR. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, at, at the end of the day, I think the Eagles have. <laughs> they have way too much talent to lose this game. Um, 
I think Jalen Hurts will have a nice game. Um, I don't think the Giants will play all that great in this one. Yeah, give me the Philadelphia Eagles to finally have a nice win for the first time in a while and beat the Giants. Nice win? This is the Giants we're talking about. Well, I, they're, they're at least going to look good. Yeah, I don't think so. I think this is going to be another one of those games where they eke by. I think this is one of those games for them that I'm not confident. I could have picked the Giants in this one. I literally thought about it for a few minutes. This is a game where the Giants are going to want to prove that they made the right decision by getting rid of Saquon Barkley. They're going to want to prove that this is the... Obviously, it's not. They wanted to keep him. <laughs> I mean, but at the same time, they want to prove to the owner that they can li- like live without Barkley. Obviously, they want to make Barkley look as bad as possible, is what I'm saying. On top of that, the receiving core did have a good game last week between A.J. Brown's deep bombs that they kept throwing to him every other play. And then yes. the drag that they got, uh, that Devontae Smith took to the end zone. Uh, so basically, I'm very worried about this Giants secondary against the Eagles, but at the same time, I can say the same exact thing for the Giants against the Eagles, especially if Malik Neighbors comes back and plays in this one. This game is going to be very close all the way down to the end. Give me the Eagles to win this one 24-20. I would not be surprised if next week we're talking about the Giants who just won this game and that Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni was fired. I would Whoa. not be surprised. I think that he needs to go. I think this is another one of those games where this Eagles team is so talented, they should be doing so much better than they are, and Nick Sirianni continues to hold them back. Give me the Eagles by four points in this one. As we move into our next game, which is the Rams against the Raiders at SoFi Stadium. The Rams are at home. Looking to get a big win in this one to keep their playoff hopes somewhat alive, I guess. Do the Rams win it, or do the Raiders continue to be up and down all season like they have been? This game is absolutely disgusting. On yeah, paper. This, I, yeah, I'm terrified so of this game because this is going to be the game that I get wrong. <laughs> it very well could be. Um, There's a chance of Mar- uh, not Amari Cooper. <laughs> yeah, Amari Cooper Cup. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to get at. Amari Cooper Cup. There's a chance Cooper Cup comes back for this game. Uh, Not official by any stretch of the imagination, but it's out there. There's a chance that it happens. Um, Offensive line for the Rams, still banged up. Still no Puka Nakua. Um, looking at the Raiders' side of things, no more Devontae Adams because he's now a New York Jet. Um, so what do you mean? He wasn't even playing for him anyway. That's true. He was injured, <laughs> but whatever. Um, no Christian Wilkins for the Raiders because he's injured. on an injured reserve. Um, they got Max Crosby still playing on defense, so it's probably the only bright spot the Raiders <laughs> got right now. Um, I'm going to have to go with the Rams in this one. I don't know. The Rams are at home. You know, it it's two kind of crap teams right now, and the one team with a good quarterback is the Rams. Uh, Raiders are kind of just flip-flopping between quarterbacks right now, and um, it's kind of sad to see for Antonio Pierce because he, last season it was so it was such a cool story seeing him come in and bring this Raiders team to life, and now they're just dead again. So I kind of feel bad for him because they I need like, a quarterback desperately. And they need a quarterback, and they need a receiver again because they got rid of Devonte Adams. They also need a defense. A defense would be pretty nice to have. Uh, um, they, they had one for, for like two weeks. Yeah, Patriots. Yeah, yeah but uh, I'm going to have to go with the Rams. I, I just don't see any scenario where the Raiders go into L.A. and beat the Rams unless Max Crosby had the game of his life and had like four sacks or something crazy like that. So, yeah, give me the Rams over the Raiders in this one. Who you got? I have to go with the Rams as well for three main things. Head coach quarterback and home field advantage they have the better head coach better quarterback and they have the home field advantage in this one this is just like over there in los angeles they're just gonna win this one by a ton i think not not really i think they win this one i think that the raiders are gonna keep this one close it's gonna be back and forth for most of this game but i have to go with the rams in this one i just trust sean McVay so much more than i trust antonio pierce and that's not to knock pierce i think he's a solid head coach it's just you're going up against one of the best offensive play callers this game's seen, especially in recent years. So give me the Rams to win this one, 20-17. to 17. I think they win this one whether Cooper Cup plays or does not play. So uh, I do think that this is going to be one of those games that's very tight. It's going to be one of the crappers of the week again. But, I mean, it, at least we don't got to watch the Panthers this week. So and, uh, that's, that's going to be our next matchup. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Yeah, yeah Commanders, Panthers. And it's, this is one of those games that nobody really is going to care about. No. I mean, <laughs> any game with the Panthers in it, no one's caring about. Unless your team's playing them. Got it. Or if you're the Panthers. Well, even <laughs> if you are a Panthers fan, you probably don't care about the game. Yeah, there's three of them out there. Maybe four. Yeah, the Carolina okay, fine. Panthers, the Florida fine, Panthers. Finally got ten after Andy Dalton's win. 
<laughs> that one win. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, better than something. Uh, uh, no. Uh, they put together a co- more complete offensive game than the Bills have. No. <laughs> In the last few games, yeah. The last few, I guess. But they played <laughs> crappy <guess>. teams. <laughs> Like the Jets Moving defense. into the game, though, Jaden Daniels is back. He has been solid at quarterback for them. Obviously, last week he didn't really do too solid. great. More than solid. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that Jaden Daniels is a very good quarterback. We'll have to see how he does this week. I think that this is going to be a game that fireworks are going to be firing off every three seconds at FedEx Field. Even though their stadium is absolutely garbage. I think that this is a game for the Panthers and the Commanders. <laughs> this is such a random shot of the no. stadium for no reason. Because <laughs> the crappy pipes in the stadium is a factor in the game. Yeah. I think the Panthers win. I think that the stadium is just too, too trash. <laughs> um, Got to get back on track here. Dude. Yeah, I know. I, I think that the Commanders are going to have a very good game, though. We'll have to see how this game plays out. I think that the Panthers could put up points, though, with Andy Dalton. Too. It's a very bad secondary they're going up against this week, especially against a injury-prone Kendall Fuller who just came back from injury a couple weeks ago. So they're coming off a loss to the Ravens. Do the Commanders get a win, or do the Panthers pull off the upset on the road? Who do you got? Commanders. No. <laughs> oh, All right, oh, moving on. Not, no. Yeah. Yeah, move on, please. I don't want to talk about this game. This game's terrible. I mean, their offense is good. I mean, it's it's okay. It's I'm not gonna say it's good. It's okay. It's a lot better than what it was with Bryce Young. Um, uh, random shot for no reason. It, I think it's a good reason because the Panthers suck, and it's you know it's not like they're a stadium or anything with broken pipes. I mean, they do got they are. Do broken, you imagine but. FedEx Field but with the Panthers like fans there? You know, like how little fans show up and like how terrible the stadium is. That'd be like the worst. Stadium. Negative people will oh, show up. Yeah, literally of all time, <laughs> that'd be the worst place. Um, yeah, the Commanders, uh, of course, they did lose to the Ravens last week, but, you know, Ravens it are on a roll Ravens. right now. Ravens are just killing every team right now they're playing. We'll get to them um, soon. They, they play a close game with them, too. Like, they played a lot better than how the Bills played. Especially in the first half. They played nice. Yeah, Jaden Daniels is still looking pretty good, too, and this might be he a slaughter really, fest here yeah, for the Commanders. Yeah, he couldn't commanders. really run, though, last week. He couldn't, but he definitely can against the Panth- Panthers, because <laughs> the Panthers have no defense. To speak of whatsoever, okay. Um, okay. I, I do think the Panthers could score some points, but if anything, it's going to be some garbage time points. And I think the Commanders are going to roll on this one, and they're going to beat a bad team, which they should do with uh, how this young quarterback Jaden Daniels has been playing to shut off the season. So yeah, give me the Commanders. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Commanders as well. 31 to 20 is my final score in this one. I think that this is going to be one of those games where it's a little higher scoring on both sides. I think the Commanders probably have this one over by halftime, and that uh, this one's just going to be. Them running the ball out the second half. The, the Panthers are going to come back a little bit to make it close in garbage time. But give me the Commanders to win this one. They were one of the hottest teams in the league, if not the hottest team in the league, heading into last week. And then this week, I don't think that really changes too much for them. They played one of the best teams in the NFL, and they played them so close, lost by just seven points. And at the end of the game, they really made this one very close. They had a very good job uh, containing Lamar Jackson, especially in that second half. But the Commanders did just enough to lose that game. I don't think that they do that this week. I think that they're going to get this job done against the Carolina Panthers. This game they should win, and they will win 31-20. And then we're going to move into our next game, a potential game of the week if McCaffrey played. 49ers versus the Chiefs, our final 4 o'clock game of the week. It is in Santa Clara, so the 49ers have that going for them. They're at home. Do the 49ers win this one without CMC, or do the Chiefs keep rolling to a 6-0 and start? You know, if the 49ers were healthy in this game, I would. There's a really good shot I'd probably pick the 49ers I, this game. I'm so serious. If the 49ers were healthy, I would pick the 49ers just because the Chiefs are coming off their bye week and the Chiefs have and not been playing impressive. Yeah, no, they haven't. But um, good it, teams find ways to win the shitty games, like the Bills did against the Jets. The, okay, yeah, very true. And the Chiefs are five and all right now, undefeated. Their defense has been playing really good, even without like. With losing Jarius Sneed last season, um, the offense has been kind of—they've been making plays and they've been needing to make plays. I think that's a pretty good way to put it. Yeah. Clyde edwards helaire has a chance to play this week. I don't know if you saw they uh, yeah. opened the practice window for him. Forty um, uh, ers they—they've uh, been struggling. They did get a good win against the Seattle Seahawks, but Seahawks are an easy team to score on, even when your team is banged up like the Niners are right now. Um, and going against the Chiefs defense is an entirely different defense. It's an entirely different beast. Um, so I think they're going to struggle a lot more to score points in this one. 
And I, it's going to be another one of those games where the Chiefs are going to be able to score points on offense when they need to. And I think the defense for Kansas City is really going to control this game for much of this game. And I think the Chiefs are going to come out here with another win and start off the season 6-0. and You know, I'd love to see the Niners win this game, but with the injuries they got, uh, with, you know, how the Chiefs have really been handling these games, especially on defense. Defense, I can't express enough how good the defense has been. Um, it's hard, It's almost impossible to go against the Chiefs right now, even though their offense has been pretty sluggish here uh, through the first month of the season. But, yeah, give me Kansas City and Mahomes to start 6-0. and Yeah, with that being said, we both will have the Chiefs being the final team unbeaten in the NFL after this week. Of course. Based off our predictions. Uh, I do think that the Chiefs get the job done. They have been insane after the bye week. And I know I just said that they're very sluggish after the bye, but uh, record-wise, they've been very insane. Like Andy Reid Reed never loses after the bye week. It's, like, impossible to lose. This is the game for the 49ers that they kind of knew that coming out. Like, they wanted that extra week to prepare for this 49ers team. They knew that this was going to be a grudge match, especially after beating them in the Super Bowl last year. And a couple years ago, they beat them in the Super Bowl. So... I do think that this is one of those games that's going to be very competitive, very close. I think this is almost like that Chiefs-Bengals game where a lot of people were like, well, the Bengals played poor against the Patriots, and they're probably going to get blown out. I don't think that that's even possible in a game like between the Chiefs and Bengals. And the same thing happens for this game, Chiefs and 49ers. I don't think it's possible that either side gets blown out in these games. I just don't think it is. I think that Kyle Juszczyk's going to basically take the Christian McCaffrey role in this game where he's going to be the guy who's used out of the backfield for, like, gadget plays and stuff like that. I think they're going to have a very good game plan coming into this game. I think they're going to play very solid, but the Chiefs find a way to win it 27-21 to 21 at the end. I think it's going to be very like very good game, very close, but I have to ride with the 49ers defense losing them this game. Sorry for the Chiefs haters, including myself, I guess, but mm -hmm. I think they're the better team in this one. They're coming off the bye week with Andy Reid, and they're going to get the job done and move to 6-0. and All right. With that being said, we move into... <laughs> oh, game of the week. Yeah, here's a guy who has got the Jets or the Steelers winning. Which one do you have, Mike? I mean, Owen. Jets. When the Steelers are going up against Patrick Mahomes. No, I'm kidding. Um, oh, for the Mahomes on the Jets? <laughs> <laughs> I would cry. Oh, We'd be no. fucked. <laughs> I'm terrible. Anyways, um, I want to uh, say the Jets, uh, they did obviously they traded for Devontae Adams. Another big headline, uh, Russell Wilson will probably be starting this game, which I feel Not like... probably. It's already been confirmed. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I think that's a mistake, honestly. Oh, I, I think we all do. Unless, you know, he plays good. If he plays good, then, you know, it's... you know. I think he'll play good. Fun. I just don't think he'll play like Fields did. Fields offers the running game and stuff like that. I feel like the only reason Tomlin's reverting back is because some of the players, like, if you saw last week, Pickens was just jogging 90% of the time. If he wasn't getting the ball and he knew he wasn't getting the ball, he was just jogging. Minimal effort. And he, what does Mike Tomlin want? He wants all, like, he wants everybody to give all they have on every single play. Oh, of and course. The only way to do that for a guy like George Pickens is getting him the football. And it's sad to say that because he's literally just digs, again, also 14. So, yeah. Um, We'll see. You know, no, no I really, uh, it's another one of those games I really want to pick the Steelers to win. But, Ooh. you know, I'm going to have to go with the Jets. I'm yeah. going to have to do it. Um, with how much invested I feel like the Jets are right now, they have pressed the, I don't think I've ever seen a team hit the panic button twice in one season. I don't think I've ever seen the panic button get hit that fast. Yeah, Adams firing was Robert traded Solomon. literally within like a few days. <laughs> I know, like it's not days, even like hours after the game. They hit the panic button and they fired Robert or not Robert Sala. Is it Robert Sala? Is that yeah, his first name? Okay, Robert Sala. God, jeez. <laughs> um, and then they lose the Bills and they're like spamming the panic button. They then they trade for Devonte Adams. <laughs> it's um, almost like they thought they were gonna win after firing the only I know, reason they it's were crazy. still decent. Yeah, it's crazy, right? But um, if the Jets don't come out here and win after they've done all of that. It's it's they're gonna hit the panic button again. Well, what else can they do? They can't do anything else. I know they literally can't. It's it's literally impossible. Aaron Rodgers traded for Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> the Jets just trade their middle next of 10 Monday first night. Round picks. Literally in the middle of Sunday night football. They'd be like, oh, I like this trade for the Jets here, Mike. And it's just gonna make the AFC that much funner to watch. Funner. 
funnier, <laughs> funnier to watch. <laughs> it would be funnier. But yeah, the Jets, they got to win this game, I feel like. It's a must win for them. If they don't win after doing everything that they've done, it it's a total failure. Like, oh, yeah, in every definitely. stretch of the imagination possible. So, I'm going to go with the Jets in hopes for their fans that they can actually win with, like, the most juggernaut roster on paper imaginable. Yeah, if this was uh, 2021, we'd be looking at a powerhouse team. Yeah. But we're not. We're looking at the year 2024 with Aaron Rodgers, who is nowhere near what he used to be, especially in the interceptions game. It's been absolutely brutal to watch. And then on the opposite side, you have Russell Wilson starting his first game. I think he's going to look rusty in this one. And I think this is going to be one of those games that's going to be an absolute snooze fest. Again, like we had last week with the Chiefs, uh, not the Chiefs, but the Bengals and the Giants, sorry. Uh, I was reading the paper. You're fine. I think that the Jets and the Steelers are going to be... In a very good game. I think it's going to come down to the wire, but I have to go with the Jets to win this one, 21 to 17. This is just one of those games for me that I can't really, I can't really pick against the Jets for many of the same reasons as you had. They've made too many moves to not try to not have something fixed. Like it's almost like if you have like super glue and you put five bottles of super glue on something, and like it's still not fixed at all. There's going to be at least one spot where that super glue is not coming, like, it's not coming off, you know what I'm saying? I think that's exactly what this game is for the Jets. I think this is a get right game. I think the Steelers really need this one, too, though, because the Steelers lost two in a row. They finally got back on track last week with a win against the Raiders. They're still tied for first place with the Ravens right now. Yeah, but the Ravens are on a hot streak. The Ravens have, who do the Ravens got? Uh, they got the Bucks. We'll talk about them next. I think that there's a chance that if the Ravens win this week, the Ravens are going to start to pull away with the division because... And then the Steelers are starting to find their reality, which is 9-8, and 10-7. and seven. Mm. So we'll see how they go with this game. I have to ride with the New York Jets, though. 21-17 with Devontae Adams in his debut. So we're going to move into our next game, our last two final two chances to pick against uh, oh, each other, which mm. I doubt is going to happen because I think we were talking before the, the game that we were talking about the one. And I already know that your answer for this one most likely will be the same as well. So, instead of gaslighting the people, let's go. Ravens, Bucks, my personal opinion, this might be the game of the week as well. There's four games that could be the game of the week. The game of the week would be Chiefs 49ers if the Niners were healthy. Well, let's yeah, before be the season, it was the game of the year. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, they played in the Super Bowl. It can't not be the game of the year. I know, right? <laughs> and then, I, I do think that this will be a very good game, though. Uh, the Ravens and the Bucks are two of the better teams in the league right now. I mean, the last time these two teams played, was, it was a very good game as well. So I think that this is going to be a very, very close one. I have to ride with the Ravens, though. They've been mm. so hot these last few games and stuff. The Bucs had an offensive explosion last week, but then again, it was the New Orleans Saints, especially without Marshawn Lattimore. It was one of those games where, like, and they had Spencer Rattler. So I do think that this Bucks defense will do solid this week. I don't think that they'll play too, too bad. But give me the Ravens to win this one, 28-20. I think it's going to be close all the way to the end. One score game in the end, but I I feel like this could be a two-score game. I could see it being like 9 or 10 points that they win by, you know, like a 26-17 or some random score like that. But uh, I think that the Ravens get the job done, though, on the road in Tampa Bay, and they're going to keep that train rolling as Derrick Henry maybe scores again. Yeah, the Ravens are on an absolute heater right now, but so are the Buccaneers offense right now, scoring 51 points last week. Right now. But, uh, yeah, the the one issue I kind of have right now is the Ravens, of course, have started off sluggish. They've been unstoppable ever since they started 0-2. But the Buccaneers, I feel like, have been a little bit more inconsistent. Like, especially, like, uh, the game against the Broncos, for example. That was, like, oh yeah, like in between the games they played so far, like, kind of, like, right in the middle. Started off good, and they got sluggish, and they played... They played sluggish against the, uh, the Lions, too, there. Yeah, against the Lions as Three well. Three interceptions, and they only mustered 20 points. Yeah, so I feel like the Buccaneers are like, they're they're a great, really good football team, but they're a little bit inconsistent. But the Ravens have just been on like a juggernaut in the past couple weeks. I wish the Ravens and Chiefs played now. Oh, man. I think man. the Chiefs, the would, Chiefs would still win. I think the Chiefs would lose, dude. <laughs> the Chiefs would still Especially lose, without man. Rice. <laughs> That's true. And Brown. And Mark, they're actually using Mark Andrews for once. Okay, bro. 
But yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the Ravens. He's gonna get like three touchdowns in this game. It's gonna be a legacy game. Imagine. That would be my luck. Yeah. Watch, we're gonna meet each other in the, the fantasy football championship. I'm gonna win Andrews is gonna be the one that wins you this fucking amazing. league. Amazing. I would shoot myself so bad. Oh my god, you gotta censor <laughs> yourself there, buddy. Yeah, right. But yeah, both got uh, the Ravens. Sorry, guys. Final game. It's the Cardinals and the Chargers. I think that this is gonna be a very good game as well. I think that a lot of people, including myself at first, were like, ah, I don't think the Cardinals stand a chance. But the Cardinals have showed that they have played better against the teams that are closer. Like, not, not closer. The better team they play, the better they play against them, I guess. I mean, look at week one against the Bills. They kept it close. Even against the Lions, they only lost by 10 points in that game. And that was without McBride for the second half. They had a lot of games where they've been very good like that. The 49ers game that they won. They've been very inconsistent, let's say that. But I do think that this is one of those games where they'll finally get into a gear, especially at home. I just can't pick them, though. Marvin Harrison is the the main factor for them on offense. He might still play. Don't know. I, I think he'll play. He's got a concussion. So. Yeah, but I'm not sure how well he's going to play first game back from that. I don't think that they'll play too bad. I just can't expect them to win this game, especially against Jim Harbaugh, who's literally the perfect coach to beat the Cardinals right now. He likes to run the ball, and that's exactly how you beat the Cardinals right now. And then on top of that, a gritty defense that's going to stop that offense, which I think that they've played one, as one of the best defenses in the league so far this season. So give me the Chargers to win on the road on Monday Night Football 27-20. to 20. And Owen, this is our last chance to be on opposite sides. Are we or are we not? Yeah, I already told you my pick earlier, but uh, this is one of those games. We all get those gut feelings. This is my wow. gut feeling right here. I got the Arizona Cardinals over the LA Chargers. Oh my god, he actually has a different I'm actually score. doing it. Um, this just, I don't know, it just feels, this game just feels like a good setup for the Cardinals here. You're at home on Monday Night Football under the lights. A team that's kind of been uh, being trashed on a lot. A very inconsistent team, to say the least. Um, Chargers, they got an impressive win over the Broncos last week, at least in my opinion, because I didn't see them beating the Chargers, or beating the Broncos how they did last week. Um, but I don't know. Something is telling me to pick the know, Cardinals Jim. here. Something is telling me Marvin Harrison might go off in this game, and I do Whoa. think he will play this week. Um, Maybe they this even got the secondary to cover him, actually. Yeah, I think about it. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's interesting. But um, Kyler Murray, I think, is going to have a really good game. I think he's going to be able to run around the f scramble around like crazy. I think he's going to be able to score points. Uh, and I think they're going to win this game. Um, not going to tell you guys my score. Again, <laughs> my YouTube I almost did. <laughs> I almost did, but I'm not doing it. Just tease him a little bit. <laughs> oh, okay, just wrap us up here. Anyway, guys, <laughs> tease him a little bit, wrap us up here. <laughs> That's not the way you say that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching another episode of the OT Podcast. Our Week 7 predictions, we picked every single team the same again except for the Cardinals and Chargers two games. game. So, we'll, oh, what was the other one? Um, there was two games. Um, I think so. Um, there was... Did you pick the Steelers? No. Did you pick the... <laughs> yeah, I think it was just the Cardinals. Oh, no, Chargers. did you pick the Texans? No, you didn't. No, we both picked the Packers. We, yeah, we yeah, no. It was the only game. game. You're welcome, world. We actually disagree on a game. Yeah, one. You're so welcome. Someone's going to get that next week. Yes. Stay tuned to find out who. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you guys next time. See ya.